Okay, so today we are going to be making mulberry cuttings. And um, this is a Pakistan mulberry, so I am really excited to be propagating this, guys. Uh, we only have a small tree. Uh, so this uh, branch was something that I've been waiting for like a year to be able to cut off. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to go ahead and cut them into smaller pieces. And as you can see, these guys are like pretty skinny, but I'm still going to try because I really want those mulberries. And uh, I did this uh, last year, this method that I'm going to do right now. I did it last year and it worked out really well. I actually learned it from... Um, who was it? Um, Arizona Fruit Trees on YouTube. So if you want to see their video from like three years ago, it's really good, um, short, sweet, straight to the point. Uh, check them out. Uh, mine's going to be a little bit longer just because I'm going to actually walk you through everything. <laughs> uh, but he does a really good explaining uh, what he did and everything. So yeah, let's uh, get to it. First, we're going to go ahead and cut off a few pieces here. Uh, we want to get at least two nodes. Um, this little sections here and here, you know, um, inside the little baggies. I'm going to be rooting them in little candy bags like this i can't remember what they are called or what size they are but i will go ahead and note it on the description <clears throat> and i am sorry about my voice i am getting over covid so i'm, I'm trying here um but yeah so uh basically we want to get at least two notes down below uh but because this would make it like super short i'm actually gonna go ahead and put three notes in there uh last year i noticed that the bigger cuttings were the ones that did the best so i am gonna try and stick with that because i might not be able to get as many cuttings as i want from this uh branch but i want to make sure that i get something that works so yeah let's see let's go ahead and get started okay and so like i said let's go ahead and cut off this little guys here because they're gonna be in the way and this is dead, this right here. See, look at that. <laughs> yeah. And I want at least one, two nodes, uh, but I am going to have them go at least this depth here. So I want them to stick out. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut them right up here. And it's gonna be a huge cutting, but, uh, well, I mean, not really, <laughs> but uh, it's longer than uh, what a lot of people will mention you need. But I think it worked out great for me last year. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so there's the first one. And we're going to go ahead and put them in the water in the meantime. And then in here, we're going to go ahead and cut this off as well. Cut this off. Okay, and that's one node, two nodes. And I'd like to have one bag out here just for, uh, you know, just for reference. So it's going to go up at that that uh but you know what since this guy's already gonna bloom not bloom out they're gonna have their foliage open i'm just gonna go ahead and do that and this part's already dead anyway so i'm just gonna go ahead and cut this off and now i can go ahead and cut this right here okay and this might end up falling off later i'm not sure but we'll see in the meantime and the water it goes. Oh, look at all this. They're so pretty. And maybe this, guys. Uh, I feel like I'm pushing the envelope here. Yeah, I, I think I just have to. <laughs> just have to let it go. Let it go. <laughs> okay, and we definitely want to add a little bit more water here. After we put the cuttings in uh, with the cocoa corn inside the little baggies, I'm not going to be able to water them for, I don't know, until they root. So I want to make sure that they have plenty of water in here. Uh, but I don't want it to be too soggy. But uh, cocoa corn tends to absorb a whole bunch without making it too soggy. So we're just going to go ahead and mix that up. And I don't put any perlite in here. Um, I don't ever have perlite. I don't think I've bought perlite in like seven, eight years. Um, and it seems to work fine. So I'm not really too concerned about that. But I know that, uh, you know, um, that uh, the Arizona fruit tree people definitely, well, person, uh, definitely put some cocoa corn, um, <laughs> some um, perlite in there. So that's something to consider. But I think it works out just fine like that. Okay, so we've gotten to a consistency that you will probably see in a whole bunch of videos where basically if you squeeze it, actually I can use a little more, <laughs> a little more cocoa part in this because it is a little soggy, but you know what? This is good though. Okay, so this is a consistency that I like. See, it's, uh, 
you can still squeeze water out of it, but it's not like super soggy or anything. It's actually breaking out pretty nice. So I'm just gonna go ahead with that. And and it's super easy from here. Basically just grab the little bag, fill it in. And you definitely wanna fill it in as much as you can, like super tight. And I do plan to do quite a few of these cuttings because um, I, ha I still have a few fakes to do. And I'll be making some more of the regular mulberry trees that I did last year. So I definitely want to mix a whole bunch of cocoa bar. So this is just going to, this right here is just to show you guys. <laughs> but I actually have a bigger container uh, that I will be using for the rest. Okay, so see how it's, uh, it's pretty packed in there. Okay, and... Now, let's show you what I'm going to do with uh, the cutting itself. Okay, and last year, basically what I found was that if I scored them at the base, they actually did a lot better. So, I'm just going to go ahead and go lightly. Last year, I tested some out with uh, soil, uh, you know, store-bought soil, and then some with cocoa coir, uh, some with, that were scored and some that were not. And the ones that were scored actually rooted a lot faster. So that's something that, you know, I'm going to be doing from now on. And also, I'm never going to try them out with soil again because that was, oh my goodness, it was fungus gnat galore. It was just so bad. Uh, so I don't plan on doing that again. But um, yeah, so I mean, you could do a better job at this, I'm pretty sure. Um, I just score them lightly, like this can be a little more. Basically what you want to do is expose a cambium, cambium, I think that's the name, um, so that it can root a lot easier. And kind of like if you were doing air layering, that's basically what you would want to do. So look at that. Okay. And now that we've got that, we go in here and then I just jam it in there. Mm -hmm. Once you feel like it's all the way at the bottom, then you just go ahead and uh, you can close it up right there. And you know what? I think I may have cut them too long. <laughs> Last year they were at about here. But see, I don't want to miss out on these little nodes. They're so cute. Um, so we'll see what happens. But uh, maybe I can add just a little more couple card in here just to make sure it's fully packed. And I pack it in there because I want to make sure that this is tight and it doesn't move the, it doesn't allow the cutting to move too often or too loosely. There we go. Okay. And your hands will get dirty. It's just a given. Uh, so keep that in mind. Okay. And then you just tighten it up as much as you can. Okay, and then this is where the tape comes in, because basically, I am going to tie this up here. So last year, the cocoa card didn't get any fungus mats, and I think part of it was because of this tight knot that I did in here, because I had them in the same spot as the ones that I did with soil for a while, and those guys were a mess. So, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. It does not look very pretty, but it does the job. And then, look at this. What we're going to do is make it even tighter. So, I'm going to be using a lot of tape. <laughs> there you go. And after a while, I start making them, making these lines a little straighter. But for now, <laughs> you know, it's the first one I'm doing for right now. So, I think it just needs a little more practice. And because the bag is clear, you're going to be able to see the roots growing through there. Last year, it took about three weeks. Uh, so I'm thinking that that's probably uh, how long it's going to take me. Although this year, the weather seems to be a lot warmer. So there's global warming for you. <laughs> there we go. So we are pretty much done. Uh, now we just uh, write the name and the date. Mulberry. 
and we are on and last year I started them about 10 years, uh, 10 years, <laughs> 10 days earlier. So we'll see if that makes too much of a difference, but I think it'll be fine. And now we get on to the next ones. And I'm just going to go ahead and pre-pack my little baggies before I go ahead and start uh, scoring my cuttings. It's just, you know, it works out a little bit easier that way. Line work. <laughs> So the really cool thing about this uh, method is that uh, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, I get to look at it as it's growing roots. I get to look at everything, just examine it as it's going because everything's clear. It's see-through, so it's going to be kind of nice to look, see the roots going through. But um, I don't have to water it. I don't have to do much about it, actually. I'm just going to go ahead and put them inside, um, <clears throat> inside a little container um, just to keep them standing upright. And... Uh, it should keep them basically the moisture in here indoors should be plenty i think uh, to keep them fine if anything last year they were actually getting a little moldy at the beginning because i had them inside a bin to keep their moisture content high and uh, yeah they were getting moldy so i had to take them out really quick um but uh i think it should be fine I've done um, a few other cuttings in this method this year because they worked out so well that uh, i ended up doing um, a mint set like a four little baggies so those worked out fine those are actually in the greenhouse right now um i think they've already rooted one i can see the roots on the outside but the other ones i, I can't yet but they're still alive and they should have died by now if they weren't going to so that's kind of cool and um i also did a uh, baby sun rose and that one looks so happy right now um those i did in the smaller bags but this guys i'm doing in the larger bags just because like i said the mulberries are very important to me because they are delicious and the pakistan mulberries those are huge and uh if you enjoy mulberries you know that picking them when they're so itty bitty it's like so much work for such a little tiny thing uh so most of the time when i pick the mulberries i actually just eat them straight off the tree because there's no point in bringing them inside just to put them on a little plate and uh, eat them then when they're so little you know they're so tiny mm -hmm. and look at that coco car love coco car can you see even see yeah oops making a mess making a mess okay and now let's get the cuttings okay and it's really important to put these guys in water right away just to make sure that they don't lose too much moisture but also so that you don't forget which is the bottom which is the top because <laughs> so you don't want to do them upside down you would be wasting wasting valuable valuable cuttings <laughs> I think that ought to do it. Oop. There we go. I think I feel them down in here at the bottom. There we go. That's one. And let's see. The next biggest one is this guy. Okay, and see, this is what I think is happening. Every little dot right there, I think we're actually going to get a root out of every single little dot eventually. So that's pretty cool. I know that they're supposed to come out out of the these guys, but I swear they just, you know, I swear those are little root beginnings. I don't know. That's, that, that's just me. <laughs> I haven't been growing that long, but I've been growing long enough that I think I'm right. <laughs> Oh, with this one, I may need to just do it before I put the cocoa part because he is so crooked. He does not want to go in there gently. Then I do not want to break this. Haha, <laughs> I think we made it. Yes. Okay. Whoa. Once again, pack it in, pack it in, pack it in. Okay. 
So this is seriously my favorite way of making cuttings now because it's just so easy. I mean, this right here is a little bit of a process. <clears throat> it's a bit of a process, but it's not hard, you know. It's just um, uh, it's just a little process, but it's it worked out so well. The germination rate last year was amazing. Well, other than the ones in soil, the ones in soil were a complete failure, but that's fine. <laughs> and. That's why we do experiments. And it's fun to do all of this stuff, you know, if you like plants, obviously. <laughs> so there we go. And see how it's wet and you can see all the moisture. Once it starts, um, once it grows roots and uh, basically the water is going to start up being absorbed, eventually this bag is going to get a little bit more and more loose and you're going to find a lot of space in here. Like you're going to squeeze it and it's going to be like, you know, you, all you're going to hear is the bag squishing because there's going to be a lot of air gaps in there. Uh, so that's how you can kind of tell when it's time to take them out once you see roots. And, uh, and you can see that the matter, uh, once it starts to get dry, it starts to get um, light brown. So right now it's a dark brown. Once it gets light brown and starts getting like super baggy in there and you see roots, definitely it's time to take them out and plant them. And that's the fun part. And don't forget to label because that, you gotta make sure you know exactly what you planted. <laughs> And I do try to not use a lot of plastic whenever I can. Uh, for this method, it just seems that this is the what works best for me, so I do it. Uh, but I do try and reuse, recycle any chance I get. Um, that's why I, you know, I use these guys, these little bags and this ones, but I use the other little bags on the smaller cuttings. So for instance, I'm gonna be doing a cutting for um, white sage. And if you can tell, this right here is not even going to go anywhere. Like where this cutting goes all the way down to the bottom. This guy hardly reaches in there. So I don't need such a big bag for that one. Uh, so for this one, I would do something, you know, one of the little air, air bags that I mentioned. Because they're just like, they're shorter. So they take up less space. I don't know. They do the same job. It's just some plants require a little more space than others. And... Uh, this guy so I just want to make sure I have the best cuttings possible <laughs> Okay, and so for these guys, they're like super itty bitty. So I'm just going to go ahead and put them all in one. Um, last year I did that with a few just because I ran out of baggies and I just needed the space. Uh, but it worked out. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that with these guys as well. And hopefully we will get something out of this, guys. And I think, I think we can do a little bit more cocoa corn in there too. Oh, I can't wait for this guys to root because I am... In love with the small berries and I cannot wait and three weeks is not too long to wait I hope this guys take up at the same time or less I mean obviously uh, but three weeks is what it took last year and that was that was so fast I thought it was pretty fast um, I started giving them away because last year I didn't really need any <clears throat> any of the regular mulberries i just uh i was just doing them just to test out the baggy you know method for cuttings um uh, but they worked out so well and uh they happened so fast it was really fun it was really fun um i ended up just giving them to um a neighbor uh and uh then she ended up bringing me food and that was kind of cool because um i don't cook much and she brought bread uh she bakes uh she she brought me i don't know like some sort of steak at some point uh bread it was multiple times so <laughs> maybe i think she might be getting one of these guys if they root uh not all of them this time around because this guys i'm actually making them for me this time but she might get one and i think she'll appreciate it Okay, so see, the cocoa quark gets like super light when it gets dry. So you can definitely tell when it's time to um, to take out your cuttings from the bag or rehydrate them if you can. I mean, you can always take uh, this section off 
and then just add a little you know the tape and then just add a little bit of water if you need to but honestly by the time this has absorbed some water and it has grown roots it's just better to take them out and actually plant them um but yeah but it's easy to tell look at this this is semi wet it's just I, I just need to rehydrate it but you, if you have a big container to mix this in it's so much better i'm just doing this because um you know i don't know put it on video and this fits here on this desk which i shouldn't even be working on because this is actually just a regular office desk so it is not for this kind of a uh, moisture level but um you know i i, I just do i just do <laughs> Okay, and I'll make sure to list all the ingredients um, that I'm using in the description. So if you're curious as to what uh, cocoa coir I use, as, you know, the water, obviously, you can just get water. Um, but I'll go ahead and list it, the little baggies, etc. Um, and, oh, about the cocoa coir, um, I usually buy them. Uh, they're, let me see, let me just show you, actually, because I think you might be interested in getting them because they work out so well. Okay, so it's this guy over here. And this guy, um, I've seen him. He, he sells on Walmart. I buy them on the website. And uh, he sells anywhere from $7.99, I believe, all the way to $21 or $22. I only buy them if they're under $10. Um, so every now and then they'll have, it's not a sale, but they'll just be listed at $9.90, whatever. Um, or, you know, I've seen them for $7 like once. So usually it's just $9. Uh, but I've seen them for 12 13 14 15 16 17 you know, it's all of those. So I only buy them if they're under 10 uh, But they work really well. And it expends to a whole bunch. Uh, it's, it expends to a whole bunch. Uh, but just so you know, it says uh, concentrated potting mix. It's really not a good potting mix. It's It doesn't have any nutrients whatsoever. Um, it retains water really well. So if you're gonna fertilize your plants, that's great. But um, it's it's you wouldn't wanna plant just in this. This I'm just using because they're um, sterile form for uh, cuttings. So it works out and it retains a whole bunch of moisture, which is great for cuttings, but I wouldn't plant in this, not straight in this. So you're gonna see some reviews <laughs> that are just uh, people really mad because it didn't work for them as a soil because it's not really a soil it's just um it's a growing medium but it's uh it's not a full well-rounded growing medium so it's good for some things it's just not great for potting <laughs> and you know what i wasn't gonna score this guys just because they're figs but they just do so much better when you do so i'm gonna go ahead and do that Uh oh, don't contaminate the medium. There we go. Okay, that's one. It's two. It doesn't need much, does it? I don't know. We just do. We just do. And things work either way because nature has a tendency to want to grow. So there's that. <laughs> You know, my husband would probably start cutting from like here, scoring all the way down. I just, um, <laughs> the reason why I don't normally score this, guys, is because I feel bad for them. It's like, that's such a silly reason, but I just feel bad. <laughs> so I just score them because I know it helps them, but I score them the least amount possible. Uh, <laughs> but that is me. That is me. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you guys um, have seen my shears. These guys, I've had them for like ever and they are amazing. So I got them as a gift. Um, I don't know. I'm going to say ooh, almost 10 years ago, actually, because that was a wedding gift. Um, it was a gardening gift that I got. I got that and then some other like giant cutting shears uh, for tree branches and all. But um, they work so well and they take such a beating because I drop everything all the time. So, um, yeah. That, I would definitely recommend that. So if you can invest in that, I would highly recommend it because it's such a good, such a good, uh, such good shears. And uh -huh, there we go. And I'll go ahead and put some um, videos of my cuttings from last year so that you kind of know what to expect. Um, I'll put them in between the video in here. I'll 
splice some images in there or something uh but yeah so that you know kind of know what to expect so that you're not just taking my word for it um i keep mentioning the person that um I learned it from from their video from Arizona fruit trees uh just because i want to make sure that people know that i'm not just making this up <laughs> i'm not i'm not crazy is what i'm saying so yeah mm. although one does not mean that the other yeah no never mind <laughs> so this is gonna be like a super long video unless i edit it <laughs> which let's hope i do because uh yeah i should but hopefully you kind of get the idea of what's what i'm doing here it's really not hard um and you don't need to go out and buy anything too, you know, not too much. It's the cocoa quart really that's, uh, that might cost you a little bit depending on where you buy it and uh, what the price is at the current time. But um, for the little baggies, I think these guys are like $3 for like a hundred of them. Um, I just use them for, for um, birthdays. Sometimes I have to give away candy or Christmas and so on. And so I have them. But, um, but I can easily just switch over to the little airbags that come in the packing boxes. I just uh, cut off the top and I will probably put a little video clip of a video of me doing that. And uh, I use those because not everything needs a long, long, uh, you know, space here. Like I'm just making this guys like super long, but they don't need to be that long. Most, uh, most cuttings that I see <laughs> on videos sometimes are like itty bitty. Um, I just, you know, um, just extra <laughs> there you go look at that Woo. and let's add you know what let's add a little tiny itty bitty that's why not okay and then the last one last little one here aha uh -huh. oh this is gonna need more And it might be easier for you guys to literally put the cuttings in and then stuff them in with coco coir. Um, either way, it works out just fine. I just, this is just the way I prefer, but it will work out just fine. And like I said, so if you don't have coco coir, if it's hard to come by, just go ahead and do peat moss. Peat moss just has some, you know, just different, uh, it's more acidic and it's not as renewable as you would want it to be. And sometimes it's more expensive, so those are the reasons why i don't do that but you can if that's what you have you know whatever gets you planting whatever gets you growing in there so i keep mentioning the little baggies so i figured i might as well just show you so these guys are the air air bags that come in you know the boxes whenever you buy something online and then i just go ahead and you know chop off the top <laughs> and then i have little free baggies for um cutting and they are waterproof because if they can hold air that means they don't have any holes which is really cool and yeah, i didn't cut it off fully but see you can you can get the point here and then we're just gonna go ahead and do this cutting right here for the little white sage this guy was sticking out into the walkway so he's probably gonna get uh you know broken off anyway so i just broke him off now and because i figure in winter it's actually the best time to do cuttings uh because it's not too hot so if you're gonna do them in little baggies in summer i wouldn't recommend it just because the roots would probably just cook in there uh so i figure i might as well do it now be proactive and this guys so you want to make sure that you want to oh look at that boo i hate it when i when I do that uh, but you want to make sure that you take off a whole bunch of like uh, the leaves you don't want to leave too many on them because it basically it's just going to take up too much energy and they're supposed to be working on their roots so we're just going to go ahead and leave them like this and this little baggie will be super deep as it is so we're just going to go ahead and fill this up And that way you can basically just, uh, you know, reuse them because I, I never know what to do with them. So once I figured out that I could just use them for cuttings or just little bags, you know, just to hold stuff, uh, then I actually started saving them and I have been using them. They've been going fine. Um, and it's less, uh, less stuff that goes to the landfill because there is way too much plastic waste. And there we go. This is like super easy. And I'm going to go ahead and put them in here. And I haven't done one with a white sage uh, yet, but I I don't see why it wouldn't work. Um, they seem to root just fine. And I've done these little baggies on with mint and uh, little sunrose. And like I said, I've done those guys before too, uh, the mulberries. 
end face so I think it'll be just fine now I just need to go ahead and tie this up and with this little guys I can actually just tie them up I don't actually need to tape them like I do the other little baggies because they are stretchy <laughs> look at that and this tape and you know what last year i think i may have used a different tape for this guys because these guys are already coming off on the tip and that's uh that's strange uh last year they didn't do that maybe my tape was just fresh i don't know um but yeah so we're gonna go ahead and do this guys now and that and i like to do this here just because i want them to stand pretty straight i don't want them falling over left and right so i do this <laughs> And there we go. Now, um, basically, I'm just going to go ahead and label it. That way I know what date. Uh, kind of gives me an idea for future cuttings as to how long I can expect. Come on. And this is what date? There we go. So... There we go. It's super easy and it's one way to just reuse and recycle. So hopefully this one, I don't know how long it's going to take to root. I know that the figs and the, <clears throat> I know that the figs and the mulberries will be about uh, three, four weeks. Uh, this guy, I don't know. I think this guy will probably take a little bit longer, uh, but we'll just, you know, it's an experiment and we're going to learn. <laughs> Yay. Okay, and we're pretty much done. Uh, so we only did those today. Um, I will be doing a few more <laughs> later. Hi, kitty. Um, yeah, I know it's time to clean all of this up, huh? Um, I will be doing more uh, mulberries uh, later on, just a regular kind. Uh, this guy's I just wanted to make sure I got the package done, done because I cut the branch off yesterday and I didn't want it to dry up. Uh, but I do expect to feel hopefully better in the next few days and I can go ahead and finish the project because I am exhausted. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is what it is with this long haul COVID thing, uh, but I am tired and um, so I think this is all I'm going to be doing for today for the gardening aspect. Um, I do have... Uh, a few things happening here in my greenhouse um hold on so i have a few things happening here so i'll probably do an update on this uh later um these are all my little tomatoes but um yeah but for today i think the cuttings will have to do i hope it helps um uh, <clears throat> i hope it helps people out i hope it gives you an idea as to what to do and i hope you test it out because i think it works out great i think it's a super easy way to handle it because these guys are done i'm just gonna put them in a box and then i just get to um just check on them every now and then just to make sure that they're not um getting moldy because apparently that was an issue for me last year uh but other than that um uh, they will be pretty much uh, on their own and i'll check them out in a couple weeks and see their roots once they're ready to do that then i can go ahead and put them in little pots but uh thanks for watching this is cat and um if you want to see the progress if you like the little projects i do go ahead and subscribe uh like the video give me a thumbs up or share it with your friends um who knows they might enjoy it too so thanks for watching